Hello everybody, um, welcome to week four of our online classes for tourism uh, management. Um, today we're going to be talking about money, units 31 and 32 in your textbook. Now before we go on to anything, there are a few announcements um, I want to make at the beginning here. So, um, as we all know, and I sent out a message in the group, Kakao group, online lectures are due to continue until week six. So, in-class lessons are due to start in week seven, but this could change again. So, at the moment, we are going to prepare um, the next four weeks online sorry, next three weeks online. So um, now your class assignments will count towards your final grade. I'm going to um, explain a little bit about that in the next slide. Um, again, please check your file before you upload it to the e-learning website. Again, last week, some people had some problems with kind of blank documents always check your file before you upload it. So um, I just want to talk a little bit about the class assignments. Um, so your class assignments will now count towards your final grade. I will replace your homework score, the full 10% with your class assignment scores from weeks three, four, five, and six. So for each assignment, two and a half points will be given. So for the next four assignments, um, also that included last week's assignment, um, you'll get a maximum of two and a half points. So for the four weeks, that will make up 10 points. So um, the scoring system, um, if it is excellent with only a few small mistakes, your score will be between 2 and 2.5. Very good, but a lot of small mistakes, your score between 1.5 and, and 2. <clears throat> if it was okay, but some parts were maybe incomplete and had a lot of mistakes, that would be between 1 and 1.5 and points. Um, if you're thing wasn't so so good and lots of it was incomplete your score will be between 0 0.5 and 1 and if it was just very poor with only a small amount of effort made between 0 and 0 0.5 and if you did not submit the assignment just a zero so um from looking at last week's assignment if i look at week two, most of them were really excellent. So there was a f maybe one or two that I would have said were just okay, but most of the assignments from week two were either excellent with only a few very small mistakes, or they were very good, but had a lot of small mistakes. So I think if I was using week two as a guide, 90% of students were getting between 2 and 2.5 maybe. Um, so keep doing the same type of work and you're going to get very good scores on those assignments. Again, if you've got any questions about that, you can ask on the Kakao group or send me um, a private message. Um, again, today using the video, we will be pausing at parts, you may want to rewind parts as well. So um, I will give instruction when you can do that in the video. For today's class, you will need your textbook and you will need to download the two documents from the e-learning site. Um, let's see, so you should have the PowerPoint that's on the PDF file here, and you should see your class um, assignment worksheet. And today we've got four 
different parts to complete in the worksheet. So download the files and we can get ready to start today. Um, now, last week's assignment I thought was um, very good. Um, I haven't seen many of the answers yet because it's only Wednesday and I've only just checked um, a few. So it's difficult for me to see exactly where the biggest problems were. So what I thought I would do is just run through some of the answers. Um, so from the first part, we had to read the accommodation descriptions of the hotels in St. Lucia and think about which place. So which place doesn't charge for excursions? Well, it was the ANSI Chastanet. They talked about their facilities and everything was free. Most of the things in Club St. Lucia were free, but they did say there's a charge for the um, golf. So they had a $25 charge. And really, Orange Grove didn't have any excursions, so we couldn't include that. Which place has its own dive school? Again, this was Anste Chastanet. And it said, keen divers will enjoy the Paddy Dive School. So that one had the dive school. Which place has the most organised activities? Well, that was the Club St. Lucia. It had so many different types of activities on offer. All the meals, drinks, water sports, tennis, bicycles, kids club, other activities. So. That was the most organised. Um, which place is not on the beach? It was the Orange Grove because it said here it was located in a hilltop position. Well, if you're on top of a hill, you cannot be um, beside the beach. Um, which one has free water skiing? Well, that was the club. Um, St. Lucia, it said water sports, including water skiing. Which place has the fewest rooms? That was the Anse Chastanet, which had 48 rooms. Which has the most rooms? Club St. Lucia, which was 372. And the Orange Grove had 62 rooms. And which place is the simplest? Well, that was the Orange Grove. It sounded quite a basic place, um, not many facilities. Um, there weren't any kind of special excursions. So that one was um, the simplest. Now, the next part here, we're going to get some very, very different um, answers. So I thought I would just speak and give you my opinions, what I thought. Now, everybody's opinion for this is going to be um, different. Some people prefer all-inclusive hotels with all the facilities. Some people don't like that. So there's, never, there's no perfect answers for this part. So I'm just going to tell you about my opinions. So the first one, which of the three hotels would you prefer to stay at and why? So I think I would prefer the Anse Chastanet um, because it's not so big. I don't really like big hotels. So something quite small, it feels a bit more personal for me. So that's what, why I would prefer to stay at the Anse Chastanet. The next one was quite difficult. Um, what do you think is the worst thing about each place? So the Club St. Lucia, I thought the worst thing was it was just so big. Um, too many rooms. Um, it's just too busy for me. Um, the worst thing about the Anse Chastanet was quite difficult, but maybe here it didn't have a lot of facilities, maybe. It could have more facilities. And the worst thing about the Orange Grove was, for me, it wasn't on a beach. If I'm going to a beach um, holiday, I want to be beside the beach. So that was the worst thing for me about the Orange Grove. What do you think is the best thing about each one? 
Well, um, the Club St. Lucia, I think just the amount of facilities. It, there's so many things that you can do there. And especially the, the children's club. For a parent like me, sometimes it's good for the kids to go away and play with other children their own age and give parents time to relax. So I think that's maybe the best thing there. The best thing about the Anse Chastanet was the dive school. My son and I both love snorkeling. So I think if we were staying here, we would be doing that all day. And the best thing about the Orange Grove, I think, was the simplicity, how there's not many facilities around and maybe the views as well, because it is on top of a hill. But I think being a very simple hotel, sometimes quite nice um, um, when I travel. So last one we had. If you wanted to experience the atmosphere of a country and meet the people, which place would be best? I think probably the Orange Grove would be the best. It sounds just like a local hotel. The Club St. Lucia sounds like a big resort. You don't really see many local people nearby these big resorts. And the Anse Chastanet sounds like a very high class place as well. So I think the Orange Grove, I would have more chance of meeting local people. Um, so, yeah, that was just my opinion. So, as I said, for these questions, your opinion might be different. So um, I just wanted to give you some examples. Um, the next part we had to do was read the information about the Pankor Laut Resort. And we had four questions. So the first question was, how can you get there? And you can get there um, two ways. There was either the private ferry um, or you can take a plane to Pancor Island and then a boat journey. So two different ways that we could get there. Um, the second question was, how many local residents? Well, the answer was no local residents. The only people that live on the island are guests and staff of the resort. So there are no local people living there. Um, question two, what was the total number of suites and villas? Well, it was 125. And most of these were villas. We saw 94 Royal Hill villas. There were eight Royal Beach villas and 21 sea villas and two royal sea villa suites. So altogether, they made up 125. And finally, um, how many places sell food and be beverages? Well, there were five places. We had the Palm Grove Cafe, the Samudra Restaurant, Royal Bay Beach Club, Oasis Bar and Chapman's Bar. So hopefully, you got all of these um, answers. And um, again, any questions about these, you can just ask. And then the last part, well, the last part was up to you about writing your um, opinions about your hotel. If we remember from last week, I gave my example of the Hotel Suvala. So hopefully you followed that kind of example and you've managed to give a good description. So those were the answers to last week. Let's go on to today's lesson where we're going to talk about money. So I think some of this might be familiar. Um, last semester we did one lesson on money and I do remember we talked about currencies. So maybe that lesson from last semester might help us with parts in, in this week's class as well. So we're going to start by talking about some different payment methods. We're going to be giving prices for some common products. We'll look at some world currencies and we'll finish today by writing a dialogue about purchasing items and having some small problems when purchasing items. So we will start today by thinking about some different payment methods. So 
in the box here, we can see um, some different ways to pay. So we've got by credit card, things like Visa or MasterCard. And by charge card, again, charge card is very similar to a credit card, except you pay the full amount each month. But really, it's almost exactly the same as a credit card. With travellers' cheques. Now, this is where we exchange our money and we get a kind of cheque to take with us to another country. These are not so common now. 20 or 30 years ago, these were really, really common. And American Express were the company that were most known for these. But I don't think many people use them these days. We can also write a personal check. So we write the check and the money will be taken from our bank accounts. We can have a voucher. Um, this is very common with tour operators or travel agents. You may get um, a coupon for some um, a free meal or a discount for um, water skiing or whatever. So we have a voucher or coupon. coupon. We can pay in cash. We can pay in another currency. Um, when I went to Vietnam a few years ago, the hotel I stayed in accepted um, Vietnamese dong, but it also accepted Korean won, euro, um, American dollars, British pounds. So especially in big resorts, I think it's very possible that you can pay in, in a different currency, not only the countries. So um, what are we going to be doing with these? Well, we're going to hear some interviews with people who receive payment. We are going to listen very carefully and fill in some blank information in our worksheet. So you'll see part A1 listening. We've got Jane works for an airline, most passengers pay. Well, we have to fill in here, but she also accepts foreign something, but not something. So um, we've got five different um, conversations we're going to be listening to. You just need to listen carefully and fill in the best answer that you can find for each one. So um, let's go back here and let's listen. Money. Lesson 31. How would you like to pay? A1. Listen to five people talking about receiving payment from clients. Jane is a flight attendant who sells duty-free goods on board. Jane, how do customers pay? I would say most people pay by credit card now, and a few with cash. You don't often get people paying with traveller's checks anymore. Um, it's all done by computers on the aircraft, so people can give you a handful of this currency and a handful of that currency, and you can take that. You can't take coins, any kind of coins at all these days, apart from sterling, so it's, it's just notes. Um, and any change that involves coins has to be given in sterling. So I would say credit cards by far and away are the most usual form of payment. Rod is a travel agent. Rod, how do customers pay? It's becoming more and more common for credit cards. The, the proportion of, of tickets that are actually paid for by cash and cheque has reduced quite substantially over the last three or four years and probably now 60 to 70% of bookings are paid for by credit card, which may be a telephone booking where they phone us up and make a booking over the phone and pay by card over the phone, or they come into the shop and do it. Janine is also a travel agent. Janine, how do customers pay? I think most people tend to pay using their credit cards. <laughs> I mean, we, we accept all sorts of, we, we accept various methods of payment. Obviously cash is, extremely acceptable. Um, people write us cheques. Um, we also accept travellers' cheques and euro cheques, but primarily people pay using their credit cards. Um, I think credit cards give extra protection when you're buying a holiday. 
um, and possibly people don't always have the funds to buy, um, you know, pay for their holiday in one go with cash, so they spread the cost of it using credit facilities. Tom works in a sports store. Tom, how do your foreign customers pay? We uh, do get a lot of foreign tourists and we always prefer it if they pay cash. A credit card transaction takes up time and it doesn't seem worth the effort for just a few dollars. I'd say most people pay cash when they're spending less than about $50. On the other hand, if we insisted on cash all the time, we'd lose sales. We'll also accept travelers' checks as long as they're in dollars and then we give them change in cash. Uh, but we don't take foreign currency. Fiona works in a restaurant. Fiona, how do your foreign customers pay? I think if they're younger, it's usually cash, and if they're older, it's probably credit cards. Okay, so hopefully you could hear um, the answers. Now, if you couldn't hear, you can rewind the the video and listen again. Um, it may take you twice or three times, but keep listening and see if you can fill in all of, of those spaces. So there we found about different ways that people will pay. Um, I think these days for me, I mostly pay by credit card um, or cash. Um, when I'm traveling, sometimes I'll pay in another currency. But I think probably, yeah, 95% of the time I use credit card or, or cash. So we found out how we pay. Now we're going to think about how much do things cost? So what we're going to do for this is look at some common um, items. So down below here in the picture, we've got nine common items. We've got a newspaper. We've got a bottle of beer. We have hamburger. We've got a bottle of champagne. We've got a meal. We have ice cream. We've got a room in a hotel, we have a cup of coffee, and we have petrol or gas for your car. So these are nine quite common items that um, people, people will buy and how much do they cost? So we're going to be thinking about giving our answers using Korean One. And I think there's two good ways that we can do this. So we can either use the word around to say, well, it's not exactly this number, but it's close to this number. So um, let's take the ice cream as an example here. So an ice cream usually costs around 1,001. Sometimes cheaper, sometimes more expensive. It also depends where you buy this. If you go to a discount ice cream store, it could be 500 won. If you buy it in um, a restaurant, it could be 5,000 won. So we don't have to be exact. By using the word around, we're giving a kind of average price. Another way we can do this is by using the word between and then giving two prices. So an ice cream usually costs between 500 and 2,001. So we're giving um, a range of prices here. So these two ways I think are, are really useful when you're giving um, prices. We don't need to be exact here. That's something that's important. So when somebody asks you how much is a bottle of beer, you don't think about it and go, um, I think it is 5,423 won. No, we would kind of round it to the nearest number. So it's around 5,000 won for a, a bottle of beer. So um, you're going to look at the nine items. 
So again, we've got newspaper, a bottle of beer, hamburger, a bottle of champagne, a meal, ice cream, a room in a hotel, a coffee and some petrol. And you're going to write down nine sentences in your worksheet and tell me how much they usually cost. So I think just now is a good time to pause the video and take some time and write down your prices for the nine items. Okay, so we will move on to our next part today. We're going to talk about currency. So we're all living in South Korea, the currency here, South Korean won, but there are a huge number of currencies in the world. Here are just some. We've got baht, dollars, forints, francs, pesos. We have rands, ringgits, rubles, rupees, yen. So what you're going to do is look at these 10 currencies. And I want you to, first of all, write the nationality of the currency. What country does it come from? And then its exchange rate. So I'll give you an example here. I have chosen this currency, baht. So the nationality of baht is Thailand. And then my the way I've done the exchange rate is one baht equals and 37.32. One. Now, I got this from XE Currency Converters website. This could be a useful thing for you to use. They also have um, an app that you can download on your phone. It's a very, very quick and easy way to find out currency. So um, again, you're going to do this in your worksheet. Just choose five of the currencies. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Write down the countries and then just write down the exchange rate into Korean one. So um, again, everybody should pause the video just now and fill in the um, spaces in your assignment worksheet. OK, so what we're going to do for the last part today is think about some types of problems people may have with money when they are traveling. It's happened to me before um, when I was in um, Prague in the Czech Republic. I had my wallet stolen. I had to go to the police, I had no cash, I had none of my bank cards, everything was gone. It was a huge problem. Luckily, I was with a friend and my friend could lend me some cash. However, it's just an example of things that can go wrong with money when you're traveling. So we've got some examples of situations you might find yourself in. And we're going to think about what we would do or what you would say to a client if you were trying to help them. So we've got some situations. So a hotel guest has got the problem, my visa card expires tomorrow. A restaurant guest, I seem to have forgotten my wallet. Well, they don't have cash, they don't have money, um, credit cards. A client in a travel agency, is it all right if I pay you tomorrow? Hmm. A hotel guest, I was expecting a 25% discount on my bill, but you haven't given me any discount. Um, we've got four customer complaints. I'm afraid I only have dollars, not local currency. Number two, $99, is that your best price? So they're trying to haggle with the price here. Customer three, I can get the same thing round the corner for $10 less. And customer four, 
do you take Japanese yen travelers checks? So there are different kind of situations. Now, what you're going to do is choose one of the situations and try to make an example dialogue. Now, some of this language in the speech bubble here could be very, very useful. If somebody is making a request and you can't really do that, we can use things like, I'm very sorry, sir, but, or I'm sorry about that, madam, or I'm afraid we can't really do that, or positive, yes, that's no problem at all, sir. Um, well, I'm afraid that makes it rather difficult. You see, and then you would explain why. So some of this language here could be very useful for you creating your dialogue. So what I've done is I've chosen one of the situations. I chose I was expecting a 25% discount on my bill, but you haven't given me any discount. And what I've done is I've created an example dialogue. So HG is the hotel guest, R is the receptionist. So we're starting off with the guest saying, hi, I was wondering if you could help me. And the receptionist says, certainly, what can I help you with? The hotel guest, well, I was expecting a discount on my bill, but I didn't receive it. Oh, I'm very sorry about that, madam. So I'm very sorry about that. It's very important. It shows that you understand there's a problem. So now I'm going to say, could you please show me your bill and your discount coupon? The hotel guest said, yep, yeah, here's the bill and my coupon is here on my phone. The receptionist says, thank you. I will just check that on our system. Ah, I'm very sorry, but it looks like the finance team have forgotten to pro process your discount. I will do this immediately. Thanks. Now, reception. OK, madam, I have just refunded 25% of your room cost to your credit card. Is there anything else I can help you with? No, that's all I need. Thank you. And I've finished off. You're welcome, madam. And I look forward to seeing you again at the Suvala Hotel. So there is my example dialogue. We've started off with a kind of beginning. Then we've explained the problem. We fixed the problem. We've asked if there's anything else they need. And then we've said thank you and goodbye. So this is a good example, I think, for you to base your dialogue on. Again, you should be choosing any of these, but only one situation, okay? So again, this is a good time to pause the video and then complete your dialogue. Okay, well, I look forward to reading some of the um, conversations that you have um, created. So let's just review quickly um, what we've done today. So we started by talking about some different payment methods, um, credit card, cash and traveler's checks and so on. We then practice giving prices using Korean won for some common products and using around or between to talk about those prices. We looked at world currencies and the exchange rates and we finished there about writing a dialogue uh, about some money problems when purchasing these items. So that was today. Please remember to upload your files to the e-learning website. Um, next week, we are going to be talking about the bill and explaining the bill. So we're going to be listening to a staff member explaining a bill to a guest. We'll be creating um, a dialogue explaining costs and we'll be looking at service charges in different countries and this idea of the tipping culture. 
So that's going to be in next week's lesson. Now, there's just one last thing I want to talk to you about. Now, quite often students ask me, James, where can I practice listening to English? Have you got any suggestions for me? So just last week, um, um, a friend of mine sent me this website. And basically, um, this website gives you radio stations from almost every country in the world. So it's really useful for you to practice listening. Um, if you want to practice English, go to an American or a British or Australian um, radio station, listen to the people talking. You can practice Chinese. Um, there's Taiwanese, Hong Kong. Um, there's um, Malaysian um, radio stations. There's Japanese radio stations. But I just think it's um, it's quite um, a useful um, app. I'm just quickly going to show you it here. Um, so you can just type in this. Um, And it brings you onto this page and you'll see, oh, it's going into Seoul. So obviously it's got Korean um, radio stations as well. But um, yeah, Japan, we see radio stations. Let's go over to America and we'll go to, oh, what's this? What's this place here? Redway, California. So you probably get a lot of music things, but you also get a lot of um, talking as well. So I just thought this might be useful for some of you um, looking for extra English practice. I think this is an easy way for you um, to do this. Um, you can also listen to music as well. I'm sure a lot of you love listening to music. But anyway, I just thought that might be useful for some of you. So um, that's the end of today's lesson. Um, thanks for listening, everybody, and I will see you all next week. Bye bye.